Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionist, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our physiology playlist. In the previous video, we started an introduction of the autonomic nervous system. Today, let's talk about the embryology of the nervous system. So, let's get started. So, go to my channel, go to playlist, click on the physiology playlist. Today is video number 27 in this playlist. We continue the autonomic nervous system discussion. Let's start by answering the question of the previous video. Now, please read and pause. Okay, what's going on here? Oh, the patient is having memory problems, difficulty speaking, tremors in the fingers, irritability, headache. His mother is saying he's no longer himself. He's acting weirdly. And two years ago, he had painless ulcer on his penis and painless lymphadenopathy in the groin area. Six weeks later, the ulcer is gone. And now he had rash on his trunk, palms and soles, as well as generalized lymphadenopathy. And today he has neurological symptoms. So, number one, painless ulcer and painless lymphadenopathy. Two, the rash and the generalized lymphadenopathy. Three, the neuro problems. What is this? This is syphilis. His disease affected the posterior column of the spinal cord as well as dorsal root ganglia. Which of the following symptoms are likely to be seen? To answer this, I want to tell you what syphilis is. Syphilis is a spirochete. Spirochetes are divided into tryponema, syphilis, borrelia, Lyme disease, and leptospira, leptospirosis. Syphilis, a sexually transmitted infection, highly curable using penicillin. The organism is the tryponema pallidum, which is a spirochete. Transmission could be sexual intercourse or vertical transmission from a pregnant mother to her baby. First, you get the primary syphilis which is a painless chancre, and then it will resolve on its own. So the patient will say, oh, I don't need to see a doctor anymore. Three to six weeks later, secondary syphilis. This is the rash, involves the trunk and the palms and the soles with generalized lymphadenopathy, and then it will resolve. Oh, I don't need to see a doctor. Two years later, tertiary syphilis. This is the neurosyphilis and the syphilitic aortitis. Pathologists describe this as the tree bark appearance. Here is a comparison between primary, secondary, and tertiary syphilis. We have talked about all of this in my antibiotics course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. Just remember that the neurosyphilis is tertiary syphilis. It affects the dorsal root ganglion and the dorsal column of the spinal cord. This is the white matter of the spinal cord. The best way to remember the three stages of syphilis is pycmonic. Look at this. Here is primary syphilis, and here is secondary syphilis, and this one is tertiary syphilis. Why the tripod? Because it's tryponema pallidum. See these spirals? Yep, spirochetes. Primary syphilis is the painless chancre on the penis. Secondary syphilis is the condylomalata. Here is condom on a latte. Don't forget the rash. The rash involves the palms and the soles, and then the lymphadenopathy all over the body. Tertiary syphilis, the most evil one. See the aortitis, here is your aorta. And neurosyphilis, here are the neurons. And you get granuloma. The granuloma in syphilis is called gamma. Here is your grandma. We treat syphilis using penicillin, the pencil villain. And beware of the self-limiting Jerish herxheimer reaction. To get more of these animations, go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis. How do we diagnose syphilis? Scrap a chancre, tap a lumbar, puncture a vein. Let's scrap a chancre. This is primary syphilis. And then once you scrap it, you can see it under dark field microscopy or using contrast fade. You cannot culture a chancre. Never ever forget this. The serological test will include VDRL and RPR. These are sensitive but not specific. If you want the specific ones, go with these. FTA, ABS, and MHA, TPA. In the last video, I've told you, draw an imaginary line here. Anything anterior is motor, anything posterior is sensory. You do the same thing in the spinal cord. Draw a line in the sand. Anything anterior is motor, anything posterior is sensory. There are exceptions. If I tell you that syphilis will knock your dorsal root ganglia as well as your posterior column, what are these? Sensory symptoms or motor symptoms? Since they are behind the line, these are sensory symptoms. Out of these lovely choices, which one is sensory? Let's see. Inability to move, that's motor, it's out. Inability to move, that's motor, it's out. Inability to move, also out. Upper motor, out. 
loss of proprioception look at this ception from perception that's a sensory thing this is the correct answer even though you have no idea what the flip syphilis is all about if it's posterior it's sensory how about f f me it's motor it's out nervous system central and peripheral the central brain and spinal cord peripheral anything that comes out of the brain and spinal cord including cranial nerves and spinal nerves in embryology the cns came from the neural tube the pns came from the neural crest let's talk about your brain shall we this is your brain this is your spinal cord okay we have three parts in the brain for the sophisticated prosencephalon mesencephalon rhombencephalon for the uninitiated, also known as the doofuses, forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. Forebrain is divided into telencephalon and diencephalon. The telencephalon will give you the cerebral hemispheres and the basal ganglia. Diencephalon, the thalamus, the hypothalamus, mammary bodies, amygdala, etc. Mesencephalon will give you the midbrain. That's why everything that has the word meso means midbrain, such as the mesocortical limbic pathway. You know it's meso, it starts in the midbrain. Cortico it goes to the cortex. Limbic goes to the limbic system. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Rhombencephalon, metencephalon, and myelencephalon. The metin, pons and cerebellum. The myelin is the medulla. Why is the myelin the medulla? Because it will continue to the spinal cord, and this is called myelo. You remember transverse myelitis? That's an inflammation in the spinal cord. Ventricles. Oh yeah, the ventricles in my heart. Shut up. I'm talking about your brain. You have ventricles in your brain. Oh, okay. You have two lateral ventricles in the cerebral hemispheres and the CSF will start being formed here. Who makes the CSF or the cerebrospinal fluid? Beautiful ependymal cells lining your lateral ventricles. CSF is formed. Okay, let's go from the lateral ventricles to the third ventricle. How do you go? Through the interventricular foramen of Monroe. Now I'm in the third ventricle. The third ventricle is between the two thalami. Thalamus on the left, thalamus on the right. By the way, you have two thalami, but only one hypothalamus. Next, let's leave the third ventricle and let's go to the fourth ventricle. Okay, CSF, how are you going to go from here to here? I have to pass through this duct called cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius. Then I go to the fourth ventricle. The fourth ventricle is between these lovely structures what is the structural unit of your nervous system it's called the neuron how about the functional unit that's the reflex arc tell me about the structure the neuron you have beautiful dendrites you have cell body also known as soma that's why the word somatic means related to the body and then this is the axon nerve impulses go this way never this way now this slide is epic a collection of cell bodies or somas in the CNS is called a nucleus. Example, the nucleus solitarius, the nucleus accumbens. What the flip is that? A nucleus is a collection of somas in the CNS. Here is a soma, here is a soma, here is a soma, here is a soma. They form the structure, we call it a nucleus if it's in the CNS. But if it's in the peripheral nervous system, we call this a ganglion. So a ganglion, by definition, is in the peripheral nervous system. Where is the sympathetic ganglion? Peripheral nervous system. Where is the terminal ganglia? Peripheral nervous system. Where is the collateral ganglia? Peripheral nervous system. Where is the dorsal root ganglia? Peripheral nervous system. Where is the ciliary ganglia? Peripheral nervous system. System. Where is the sphenopalatine ganglia? Peripheral nervous system. Where is the otic and the submandibular ganglia? Peripheral nervous system. Medicine makes so much sense. Axons. A collection of these axons in the CNS is called a tract. Example, the optic tract. But a collection of these axons in the peripheral nervous system is what we call a nerve. That's why cranial nerves are part of the peripheral nervous system. Spinal nerves part of the peripheral nervous system. Here is a tip for you. Have you heard of the adrenal gland? Oh yeah, it has a cortex and medulla. The medulla is in the middle, is deep. Okay, this medulla is a modified ganglion. And therefore the adrenal medulla is part of the peripheral nervous system because it's a ganglion. Embryology, baby, this is the best part of embryology. You started as this, outer cell mass and inner cell mass. The inner cell mass was called embryoblast, and the outer cell mass is the trophoblast. Between them, there is a cavity called the blastocele. 
So, inner cell mass and outer cell mass, which one will form you? Yes, I'm talking to you. Which one will form the actual baby? The inner cell mass. That's why they are called the embryoblast, because they will form the embryo. Duh. So how about the trophoblast? That's for the placenta, but that's not the actual baby. Okay, we get it. Tell me about the inner cell mass, which is the actual embryo. It will divide into two layers. Epiblast on top, hypoblast below. Which one will make the actual embryo the epiblast? Hypoblast will just contribute to the yolk sac. The epiblast will form a primitive streak. And this streak will divide the epiblast into three beautiful layers. Ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. Also known as the trilaminar embryo. The embryo of three layers. Epiblast and hypoblast, known as the bilaminar. Which one will make the actual embryo? The epiblast. Inside the epiblast, you have a primitive streak that will divide it into three layers. Endoderm, inside mesoderm, in the middle. Meso means middle. That's why meso was the midbrain. It was the mesencephalon. Ecto on the outside. Endoderm will give you the GI tract and the respiratory tract. Perfect. Mesoderm, this will give me bone. This will give me muscles, this will give me blood, and it will give me the dermis of the skin. How about the epidermis? That will be an ectoderm. Ectoderm is divided into two. Surface ectoderm for the epidermis, which is part of the skin. That's why it is a surface ectoderm, because the skin is on your surface. And then neuroectoderm. Oh, neuroectoderm will give you neural tube and neural crest. Neural tube will give you the central nervous system. Neural crest will give you the peripheral nervous system. Oh, why is the adrenal medulla here? Because the adrenal medulla is a modified ganglion. What's a ganglion? A ganglion is a collection of somas in the peripheral nervous system. Medicine makes so much sense. This is your beautiful ectoderm, but we have to divide it into two layers. Surface ectoderm for the epidermis and we have the neuroectoderm for the nervous system. Here is the surface ectoderm on the outside. And here is the neural plate on the inside. This is the neuroectoderm. Who induced this ectoderm to differentiate? It's the notochord, which is part of the mesoderm. Here is the beautiful notochord, part of the mesoderm, inducing the development of the neuroectoderm. And now we have two parts, neural crest, and this will form a neural tube. The neural tube will give us the central nervous system. The neural crest will give us the peripheral nervous system, including the adrenal medulla, because it's a modified ganglion, and a ganglion is part of the peripheral nervous system. Question, who myelinates the axons in the central nervous system? Oligodendrocytes. That's why oligodendrocytes will come from the neural tube. Okay, which cell myelinated the fibers of the peripheral nervous system? Answer, Schwann cell. And that's why Schwann cell will come from the neural crest, which makes the peripheral nervous system. Makes sense. The notochord, which is part of the mesoderm, will become something inside your intervertebral disc. Here is your intervertebral disc, which is between your vertebrae. And it has two types or two parts. The part on the outside is called annulus fibrosus. And the part on the inside is called the nucleus pulposus. The nucleus pulposus is a product of the notochord. And that's why it's a mesoderm. I've told you, mesoderm is muscle, mesoderm is bone, mesoderm is the cartilage which is between the bones. For the last time, endoderm, GI tract, respiratory tract, mesoderm, bone, cartilage, muscle, tendons, etc. Ectoderm, surface ectoderm, neuroectoderm. This is for the epidermis, this is for the nervous system. Talking about the nervous system, you have the neural tube for the central nervous system and everything that comes with the central nervous system. Neural crest is for the peripheral nervous system and everything that comes with the peripheral nervous system, including the adrenal medulla, which is a specialized ganglion. If you love these lectures, check out my antibiotics course on my website, medicosisperfectsnails.com. It has 40 videos, 70 questions, 35 cases, and my Perfect Snails Ultimate Notebook. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my premium courses. We will continue in the next video.